Port Glasgow on the Lower Clyde. This active port on the west coast of Scotland is one of the first places the Gulf Stream meets land on its way past Europe. Many a ship has sailed these waters on her way to and from the Americas. The River Clyde has been a center for shipbuilding for hundreds of years, with boats being built in the area possibly as early as the 15th century. It has been renowned for its engineering prowess, legendary innovation, and prolific manufacturing for many years. It has a reputation which has not come without consequences. However, there is a darker side to the history of the Clyde. The tobacco lords were Glasgow merchants who in the 18th century made enormous fortunes by trading in tobacco from Great Britain's American colonies. Many parts of modern-day Glasgow carry echoes of merchants who were associated with the tobacco business or the Caribbean sugar business, both of which were utterly dependent upon the enslavement of black people. Celebrated in his lifetime, John Glassford of Dugalston and Whitehill was the most extensive ship owner of his generation in Scotland, and one of the four merchants who laid the foundation of the commercial success of Glasgow through the tobacco trade. He owned tobacco plantations in Virginia and Maryland. The barons that built Glasgow into what it is today made their money from trade with slave work plantations. This trade was vital to the plantation's survival and so to slavery itself. Glasgow's port, unlike Leith or Aberdeen, provided a direct shipping route to America and the Caribbean. Through this port, slavery would eventually touch all of the country. As wealthy families from other parts of Scotland married into the trade, or travelled from Glasgow to run the plantations themselves. A series of industries boomed in Glasgow as a result of the trade in sugar, tobacco and later cotton, rope and leather works, iron foundries, textile factories churning out clothes for slaves, and the wealth spilled out through the region. By the late 1700s, a growing number of people were calling for Britain to end its involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. Politicians and merchants and the working classes were all becoming uncomfortable with the harsh realities of slaving. Send back the money, send it back, to the dark place of gold, to a run from human flesh and bones. By agonies untold, there's not a might in all the sun, but what is shamed with blood, there's not a might in all the sun, but what is cursed with God. Send back the money, send it back. Partake not in their sin, who buy and sell, and trade in men. A curse against the women, there's not a might in all the sum, and honest man may claim, there's not a might but what can tell, of fraud, deceit, and shame. Send back the money, send it back. Twill strike the fatal blow, that soon or late must yet be struck, and to the negro's woe, there's not a might in all the sum, but what will prove to be, is iron in the soul of him, who has enslaved the free. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 